This could be one of the biggest pieces of financial news in 50 years, and almost nobody is talking about it. It has everything to do with gold. Right now, lawmakers in the United States are trying to make big changes involving bringing the US dollar back to a gold standard. It's something this guy wanted while he was in power, and if successful today, could make the US untouchable on the global economic scene. That is, if this guy and this government allows it to happen. But there's another player in this golden game that has been called the secret bank that runs the world, which could decide the fate of the way we use money for decades to come. I can't stress enough how big this story is, and it could literally change the way that money is used in a way that it hasn't been for half a century. So what exactly is happening with gold? Just last week, I spoke about BRICS, an alliance of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, which together could soon threaten the power of the US dollar by creating a new global reserve currency backed by gold. Well, I may have spoken a little too soon, because just a few days ago, the first steps were possibly taken to reduce the weakening of the US dollar. Introduced by Republican Congressman Alex Mooney, Bill HR 9157 proposes returning the dollar back to a gold standard, meaning for every dollar in existence, the United States would need to own an equivalent amount of gold. This isn't some fringe theory. Before the 1970s, this is the way the US previously operated, as did many other nations around the world. But in 1971, President Richard Nixon signed an order to take the US dollar off the gold standard, which gradually led to all other countries doing the same. Eventually, there was nobody left with money linked to a gold standard, with Switzerland being the last nation to remove its currency connection to gold in 1999. But this could all be about to change if the US has its way, and it could seriously increase the power of the US dollar. One of the main reasons we're currently experiencing such bad inflation is because a government have the ability to print as much money as they want. And with each dollar being printed, it devalues the rest of those in existence. This makes a dollar worth less, and things in society cost more. However, this could no longer be possible with a gold standard. In order to print more money, a government would first need to buy more gold, an equal amount in value to each new dollar that they wanted to create. This might sound complicated, but there are huge benefits to doing this. For example, governments and banks could no longer manipulate the money supply by over-issuing money. And it also makes a currency much more trustworthy for international trade, because foreign nations could rely that its value wouldn't heavily fluctuate. Former President Donald Trump was apparently a big fan of returning the US to a gold standard. Bringing back the gold standard would be very hard to do, but boy, would it be wonderful. But many economists aren't so sure, suggesting that a gold standard would actually make the economy worse, not better. So there are things about the gold standard that sound good in theory. However, there are many things that would likely stop this new bill in the US from becoming a reality. Firstly, the new US bill has been introduced by the Republican Party. And as the Democrats are currently in power and hold Senate majority, there's a small likelihood they'll oppose it. But secondly, there are also massive problems of how much gold the US would have to own to go back to a gold standard. Today, it's estimated there is a little over 2.2 trillion US dollars in circulation circulation, all of which would need to be backed by an equal amount of gold. However, even though the US has the largest gold holdings on Earth, it's still not enough to cover this amount of currency. The US Treasury reports its current gold holdings at around a quarter million ounces, at today's value valued at around $420 billion. However, many believe the Treasury has much less than that, as the last real audit of the US gold reserves was made more than 60 years ago. But even if this number is accurate, the Treasury would need to own more than five times the gold it currently has. Either that or the price of gold would need to rise to more than $9,000 per ounce, a far cry from the $1,650 per ounce it's worth today. Basically, it seems that there's a lot working against the idea that the US dollar should be once again linked to gold. But what do you think? Do you think we should return to the gold standard or if we should just avoid it? Let me know down below. The interesting thing is that the US government isn't the only one that's paying attention to gold again. So are financial institutions, the biggest players in the financial world. According to a recent study, institutional investors are now putting up to 50% of their assets into alternatives, which includes a lot of gold. However, they're also focusing on fine art. But how do you invest in fine art without the backing of an investment bank? Like I do. You go to the sponsor of today's video, Masterworks. During the last period of heavy inflation, like what we're in right now, fine art appreciated by over 33% annually. 
performing better than gold. What Masterworks does to help you get into this asset class is genius. They buy high-end art pieces, securitize them, and allow you to buy into them with shares. And so far, they've been right on the money recently selling a painting for a 33.1% net return to investors. I've personally invested with Masterworks three times so far, investing in the Picasso, Banksy, and Kusama artworks on your screen right now. There's usually a really long wait list to join Masterworks. However, because I've partnered with them for so long, you can skip the queue by clicking the link in the description today. Okay, so now back to the video. The US returning to the gold standard is only half the story of the big money moves happening around gold today. And it's the second part, especially that almost nobody is talking about. Last week, we spoke about how BRICS nations have seriously boosted how much gold they've bought over the past decade, increasing their supply by several thousand percent per year. But it's not just BRICS nations that are buying up gold supply like never before. It's basically everyone. Before the global health crisis in 2020, governments around the world went on a gold buying spree. In both 2018 and 2019, central banks collectively added more than 650 tons of gold to the reserves each year which is more gold than has been bought on a yearly basis in more than 50 years. So why are they buying up this much gold? Well, it's likely got everything to do with a Swiss bank that you've never heard of before. This is the Bank of International Settlements, otherwise known as BIS. Located in Basel, Switzerland, it's basically the central bank for central banks. It's collectively owned by the central banks of 63 nations around the world, representing more than 95% of the world's total economy. And to suggest that BIS has a lot of power would be an understatement. The BIS basically controls the way your nation's central bank has to do business, determining things like how much banks around the world would have to keep as reserves, but it also determines which assets are considered stable investments and which are not. It categorizes assets into three groups, tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier one being the safest kind of investment with the least amount of risk, and tier three being the most risky that banks should take care with or avoid. To comply with international rules, the BIS decides how much of these assets a country's banks should own. And until recently, the BIS only classified one asset in the risk-free tier one class. That one thing was the almighty US dollar. But it's no longer the case that the US dollar is the only one in the tier one asset category, according to BIS. There is a new addition and as you might expect, it is gold. Previously, gold was categorized as tier three. In other words, the riskiest type of asset that a bank could own. But on the 1st of April, 2019, that all changed with the BIS reclassifying gold to tier one, the safest asset possible. Since then, central banks have been buying up an insane amount of gold. In June alone, collectively adding a total of 59 tons of gold to reserves, more than half of that being bought by the central bank of Iraq and much of the rest flowing to nations in Europe, Asia, and South America. But even though most nations are increasing gold reserves at a massive rate, one country in particular isn't following this trend. Surprisingly, that nation is the United States, which has added nothing at all to its gold reserves in decades. And compared to the reserves it held in the 1950s, today only holds a third of what it previously did, a fact that would make transitioning the US dollar to a gold standard a very difficult prospect. Basically, for the first time in most of our lifetimes, it seems that gold is on the rise once again. And even though Joe Biden's government right now can't decide whether or not it wants to integrate gold back into its society, it seems that everybody else has made up their mind. And I think that this is something that we should all be paying attention to. For thousands of years, humanity has seen gold as the most stable and reliable form of money in existence. And even though we've moved away from it over the past 50 years, that all seems to be changing in a big way. From investment firms to nations and central banks, there are serious moves being made to make gold a regular part of world trade again. And it's easy to see why. All nations see gold as something that holds value. Its limited supply also means it's very difficult to manipulate or influence. And in times of economic crisis, it's usually one of the most valuable assets you can hold. That's why for me at least, gold has been a part of my personal investing strategy for years now. I'm a big fan of trusting in something that's been money since the dawn of civilization, something I'll likely continue to do for a long time to come. I love gold. 
So do you think that gold is here once again to stay? Or do we continue putting our trust in faith in fiat paper money? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, you might also enjoy the video we did last week about BRICS nations possibly creating their own gold-backed currency. Click on your screen to watch it now. Otherwise, we have an epic newsletter of 75,000 people plus that enjoy getting extra financial nuggets written in beautifully written stories. There's a link down below to join. Also, we'd love to have you here. So consider subscribing. And finally, we have a private membership community where we talk more things finance and freedom. There is a link in bio to find out more and I will see you in the next one.